Okay, so this is a Z-Wave switch. I have a smart home. So what happens sometimes, especially in the event of a power outage, when the power comes back on, some of these switches, the GE switches, not so much the Leviton ones, the GE switches, they fail after power comes back on. Obviously, they get some kind of surge, and the symptom um, is either this blue flash, uh, there'll be the, the blue flashing light with nothing happening, or you'll hear the relay inside going on and off. So let me turn this on, and you'll hear it. And the light that you see flashing, what's just happening is that relay is just going on and off and the connections being made intermittently, it's just on and off, on and off. So the LED lights that this controls, which are under cabinet lights, will go on and off as well. <laughs> so obviously it's enough to drive anybody crazy. And so usually I just shut the switches off and then just come back. And it used to be that I would replace them, but these switches are $35 a piece. So hopefully we fix the switch and save us 35 bucks. All right, so stay tuned. Okay, so here's the switch that we got off. Let's see how we're going to take this thing apart. It's the first time I've taken one of these apart, so bear with me here. So it looks like we've got a few tabs. I already knew that this needed to be dealt with, so I'm just going to push these tabs in. All right. This on off switch, this controls the switch, the whole switch assembly on and off. So it's kind of has a little little indentation that you just have to pop out. Okay, see that? All right, so now we've got this lead wire here, some kind of antenna wire or something here. So I'm gonna take that out. Let's take these four screws out here. Okay. Antenna wire comes out. Okay. All right. That's just the uh, the ground wire. I'll just go back into there later on. And go something like that. Anyway, so we'll figure that out later. Okay. Okay. This is the LED light. Let's just remember how to put this. That we got to put this back on later. Okay. And what else have we got here? We don't, I don't see any screws holding this in place. Um, little sticker adhesive here that we'll need to kind of get out of the, the way or cut one of the two. It's holding the case down. Okay. There we go. All right. So the case comes apart. All right, so let's remember how to put this back together. Um, the no volts side here goes with these two capacitors, okay? All right. Now I'm getting this guy out. All right. It looks like there's some tabs here holding the board in. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is let me get back in a little bit. Let me see if I can take a look at this underneath the magnifier first. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and unsolder these six pins in order to take out the circuit board. Um, and looking at this board, though, what I'm looking at is the clicking noise of the relay. So that's the relay here. Um, looks like we have a few things driving this relay. We've got a few capacitors. Uh, and that's a coil. So um, I would think that that capacitor, I can't really read it, C7, I think it says, um, is the driver that I was told to take a look at. So I'm going to start with that capacitor first, test it. If it tests good, then I'll go on to the next one. If it tests bad, then I'll replace that one and we'll test the switch again. All right, so stay tuned. Let me see about how to get this board out. Okay, so this is what I 
found it was easier for me to unsolder the pins okay from the top board here to take this out but if you did want to take out the bottom board there is I just snapped it back in but there is a little tab on each side here that you have these two openings for that um, will release that bottom board but it's really tight so it's just a pain either way you'd still have to unsolder this top board and ways once you get this all out in order to get to the bottom of the circuit board to replace anything like the capacitors so much easier just not to even hassle with the bottom board just unsolder the six pins at the top use a lot of flux i highly recommend it these pins the solder on them really hold them pretty well so anyways so what do i have so this is c7 it's an electrolytic capacitor let me see if i can focus on here uh it's 10 microfarads there we go uh, 25 volts okay okay so i like replaced the c7 capacitor remember that capacitor or to make a note that that capacitor is an electrolytic capacitor um so it's important that you make sure that uh, the minus and the plus are in the right place. The minus, there's a little circle on the PC board with a little uh, bold dash on it. That's the minus side. So in this case, the minus of this electrolytic points upward towards the coil. Okay. So let's go ahead and um, put this together and yeah, see what happens. Okay, so it just so happens, I didn't have to remember, hey, the two capacitors go to the little label side. Um, these are labeled inside. So basically here, white, neutral, and here you go. That is white, neutral right there, okay? So let's get these things back in place here. You wanna make sure that this plate is on this side of these two holes because when you screw this in sorry let me backtrack you want to make sure that this place is on the inside of these holes so when you screw this screw it'll tighten up against this okay and that'll hold the wire in place so that's kind of important that you have those lined up properly Okay, we'll just test to make sure. Yeah, okay. So now that that's snapped back in place, I'm gonna put the, uh, oh, what did we forget here? Oh, no, we didn't. Okay, we get this piece back. Don't forget to put the LED light back on. That's rather important there. Okay. That little hole right there, that's where the antenna wire is gonna come back through. This ground thing is gonna go back into play there. We're going to put this antenna wire, I'm assuming that's what it is, back into the grooves here. Okay. And then put this back in play.
Okay, got all the tabs snapped back in. I can hear the clicking. So it looks like we got everything back together again. Okay. All right. So let's go wire this back up and see if that clicking went away and it would start operating like normal again and see if that was the culprit. Okay. Stay tuned. Okay. Well, we got this thing put back together and I don't hear it clicking anymore. And in fact, I see a blue light on the switch and it's not flashing. So that's a very positive sign. So final test, I should turn this thing on and you'll probably see some colored lights, maybe even some blinking. I don't remember what the last setting on these lights were. So let's take a look. One click and there go the lights and they work like they're supposed to. The only reason they're blinking on and off is that's the last setting that we had on them. And I don't have the remote to, to change that. So the bottom line is no more clicking. The switch works like it should. So that, um, that electrolytic capacitor was the issue. So there you go. Now you know. Electrolytic capacitor, C7. Um, what did I say? 10 microfarads, I think it was, 25 volts. So that's what needs to, replay, to be replaced. And uh, yeah, hopefully it saves you $35. Um, then, like I say, GE, these switches, G, the Z-Wave GE switches, notorious for doing this. Um, so why they didn't engineer these things better is beyond me. But um, I don't think you have the same issues with the Levitons. But there you have it. All right. So like I always say, enjoy life. You live one day at a time, but it could be your last. So live it like it's your last. All right. Peace out. There you go.